Oh, sweet. Xenomorph Cola. Xenomorph Cola, it's so good, your chest will explode. Hi, I'm Thomas from Film Cocktails, um, and tonight we watched Alien Covenant. And tonight we made a shot inspired by the new movie Alien Covenant. Um, you may also notice that Clint is not here with me tonight. Uh, this is just going to be a solo review. Clint was busy this week and was unable to watch the movie. So my first impressions of this movie, I actually liked it a lot. Like, I'm a big fan of the Alien series. I liked Prometheus. Like, I wasn't the biggest fan of the characters, but I like the look. I, Ridley Scott always makes good looking movies, so that was really good for this. Um, and he carries that over into Alien Covenant. So the plot's pretty standard, it's like any other alien movie. There's a signal and a ship deviates from its course to go investigate and then alien stuff happens. Um, the ship is, this time it's a bunch of colonists on their way to another planet. There's a solar flare that damages it and it's going to take them seven years to get to this planet. So they decide to deviate and go to this other planet that I can't remember the name of. Um, it's the home of the engineers, which is where Shaw and David were leaving from at the end of Prometheus. So they go there uh, to investigate. It turns out it's inhabitable, like pretty much similar to Earth. So they land, they're like, oh, we can build a colony here, we can do all this stuff. And they land there and then stuff starts happening, like there's this spore that was created from the black goo from the first one, that once it gets inside of you, you it essentially makes like an alien-like creature that really it was different, but it wasn't the same thing. Um, so a couple crew members die. Uh, they end up blowing up the shuttlecraft that they used to come down from the big colony ship. And so everyone's marooned on this planet. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of getting into spoiler territory, so you can skip to this time code if you don't want to review spoilers. But it turns out David is living on this planet who is the android from Prometheus. Him and Shaw, as you know, flew off at the end of the movie to go find the engineers, and it turns out he's living here. Um, he starts off saying that the virus was accidentally, accidentally released and killed all the engineers and that Shaw died during a crash. You later on learn that that isn't true at all, that he released it, he killed Shaw. He was actually experimenting on Shaw, and there's a pretty, ups, or a pretty unsettling reveal of that. Like, it shows her mutilated body in this back room of this cave that he's living in. And he's essentially experimenting to try and make the perfect organism. And, which is an interesting concept, but it kind of loses focus and they just shove in the alien stuff at the end. And it turns out he's the one that made the eggs and is trying to make this organism. And so he takes the captain down to where these eggs are, and of course one of them jumps on his face. Chestburster scene, Xenomorph starts running around, there's an alien action scene, and it, which is pretty good. The action in this was pretty well done. I was surprised, I was a little worried, I was like, uh, it's too action-y, it seems more like aliens than an actual alien movie. But it was good, like, it kept me engaged, and they take it up to the ship, and all this stuff and uh, they blow it out the airlock so it's kind of it devolves from who created us to let's make an alien movie and 
like I said, the alien parts were the weakest part. What happened here? The characters. The characters are... I, I found myself liking them. Like Danny McBride, I was a little worried whenever I saw his casting in this. But he actually turns in one of the better performances in the movie. Um, Catherine Watterson, who is our main protagonist, who is the Ripley fill-in, uh, she does pretty good too. And she forms a relationship with Walter, who is Michael Fassbender. He's back and he plays two characters in this. He plays David, which was the android he played in... Uh, Prometheus, and he also plays um, <clears throat> Walter, which is an upgraded edition that is now on the Covenant, which is the colonist ship that they're taking. And the alien, as far as a character, like, whenever they do it, CG, it just doesn't look right. I don't like it. Like, I like the guy in the suit. That's what made the first one so good, was they were limited, and they knew that the suit looked bad, so they just filmed it in shadow and mist and showed very little of it. Kind of like what they did with Jaws with the shark, where you only show the shark when you absolutely need to, and then it kind of fuels the tension of it. This crew is made up of couples. It's the first ever large-scale colonization mission. And everyone back on Earth is really grateful. As far as uh, the technical aspects of this, it was a great looking movie. Ridley Scott is a visual director and his movies always look great. Um, so that's his strongest suit. There was a lot of gore effects in this that, you know, were pretty shocking for an alien movie. Usually they're not that gory, but this one was like the little spores that go into people and create what's called the neomorphs, which are these albino little alien things. Um, that was really neat, like especially whenever it pops out of the guy's back and they have him in quarantine, like that was neat. I like the look of the Neomorph, like I remember seeing it initially and thinking, oh no, they're just ripping off Alien, just give us the Xenomorph, but I actually liked it, like it, it just doesn't have a face, but it has like this weird mouth that opens up and it's really creepy and almost like a nightmare looking creature, like especially in a part where it's like close up to one of the characters and you don't know what it's gonna do and it just like attacks them. So here we have our chest burster shot, which is <clears throat> uh, sour apple pucker, and then I got some salted caramel baileys, and you just float that on the top of it, and then you drop grenadine in, and that's going to cause the uh, <clears throat> the baileys to mix or to curl down into the sour apple pucker, and gives you that nice fleshy looking piece and there's also a little red so that's like the blood and then the sour apple pucker represents like the aliens acid blood and it all comes nicely together um in conclusion i would recommend alien covenant um go into it though with like it being more of just a sci-fi movie if you can remove the alien elements and don't think too much about it uh this is actually a pretty good movie but because of that it kind of gives it a stigma and brings it down like it look the movie looks good the action scenes are pretty well done um and the characters are decent like or i would say above decent so if i were to give it a rating i would give it a 7.5 like it would get a lot higher rating if it didn't have the association with alien like if it was his own if it was its own thing i would really like it a lot so I mean, check it out if you're an Alien fan, or if you're just a sci-fi fan and you don't want, like, the colorful 
more fantastical elements of Guardians of the Galaxy, this is a good one to go see that's a little more grounded, a little more realistic, and has some pretty good horror elements to it. So drink up and enjoy the show. You know, that would wash down really well with some Xenomorph Cola.